So ashwagandha continues to be a very popular herbal, herbal product for treating a variety of conditions. But what about helping you sleep better? Can ashwagandha actually help you sleep better, get to sleep sooner and sleep more soundly? Maybe in the next few minutes, I want to show you the research that maybe you're not aware of. Let's go. So ashwagandha, you're probably aware of this already, but it's essentially a little type of an ever, evergreen tree that grows in and around Middle Eastern areas and India. As a matter of fact, the research I'm gonna show you today mostly comes from India. Uh, it's also called Indian ginseng. You may see that name popping up on the internet if you do your own research on ashwagandha. It is touted widely to be an adaptogen. It's an adaptogen is said to be a, a supplement that helps the body adapt to stress, whether it's psychological stress, physical stress, whatever. It helps the body better cope with stress. Personally, I kind of raise an eyebrow at the word adaptogen because it's not really a clinical scientific word. It's kind of hard to test for as well, but I want to give you that word in case you hadn't heard of it before. Just realize it's not, it's more of a warm fuzzy name and not really a scientific name in my opinion. And then lastly, if you do actually purchase any ashwagandha supplements, they may not smell so good. And that's because the word ashwagandha in Sanskrit literally means horse smell. The roots uh, don't have a very pleasant odor, and I'll leave it at that. But that's how, kind of how they're described in terms of their odor. Okay, so much for the background. Let's look at the research. So it's widely known that ashwagandha can reduce cortisol levels. That's one of the reasons it's so popular. And in this investigation, which came out uh, in 2019, adaptogenic and anti-anxiety effects of ashwagandha root on healthy people, they found some interesting things. Essentially, they're finding that people who took ashwagandha, yeah, they had lower uh, stress levels. They rated their stress levels as reduced on questionnaires. But I also noticed when I read this study, they slept better too. And so when I read this investigation, I said, hmm, I wonder if anybody has actually taken this into the lab and seen if ashwagandha helped insomnia. Well, there is some research. I've got three studies for you. Let me take a look at them here. So first study, which is one of the larger ones out there, we've got uh, 150 people, they've got sleep problems, they're given 120 milligrams of ashwagandha extract for six weeks. This is the product they actually tested. I'll link to the products that are tested in, in the description so you could check them out yourself. Some of these products actually do have studies on them like this one. And after say six weeks, what do they find? So they start out with 150 people, 144 of them completed the study. There were no dropouts due to uh, side effects. That's good. They do note that 72% of the people getting ashwagandha rep reported that they had better sleep, qu sleep quality than those who were getting the, the placebo group. Placebo group, interesting, reported almost 30% improvement in sleep quality. I wonder if that's the placebo effect going on. This does appear to be a good, well-done study. It's placebo controlled, it's randomized, it's double blind. You, know, you can't ask for much more than that, so that's a good thing. Uh, but again, it is what it is. I'm okay with a placebo effect, even if you know, even if it is a placebo effect, that's okay with me. But much greater amount of people uh, found better sleep quality taking the ashwagandha. So that's one study. Here's the other investigation: efficacy and safety of ashwagandha root extract on insomnia and anxiety. Again, double-blind, placebo-controlled, randomized study. So a little smaller, we've got 60 people here. They're divided into two different groups. Um, what I didn't like, stop, just stop you right there, what I didn't personally like about this, we've got more people in one group than the other group. So more people in this group getting ashwagandha than the placebo. Call me OCD, but I personally like research studies where they evenly distribute everybody. That's just one of my things that I look for. So it is what it is. So they give them 300 milligrams of ashwagandha twice a day, that's 600 milligrams total, or a placebo, and the study lasts 10 weeks. What do they find? Again, people find themselves falling asleep quicker after 10 weeks than those who took the placebo, and those getting ashwagandha also say they have better quality of sleep as well, again, compared to those taking a placebo. Pretty darn good, but we're not done yet. One more study for you. Efficacy and tolerability of ashwagandha in elderly for improvement in general well-being and sleep. 
right off the bat, this, when I first looked at it, I said to myself, this sounds a lot like the other study I just told you about, which was efficacy and safety. This one says efficacy and tolerability. They are different studies. Previous study had younger people in their 30s. This study actually has somewhat older individuals, 65 to 80 years of age. It is, a, again, a 12-week study. Well, again, what I do like them is they broke them up into equal amounts, either 25 people getting the ashwagandha or 25 people getting the placebo. Again, it's a 12-week study. They're getting 600 milligrams a day. Again, what do they find? Once again, a significant increase in the quality of sleep and mental alertness in those taking ashwagandha compared to the placebo. So there you got three studies, maybe four, depending if you want to count that first one, showing that ashwagandha appears to help people sleep better and also get to sleep uh, much more sooner and have uh, reduced stress levels. So you're probably asking yourself, what is the dosage? So looking at these studies, I'll say it's anywhere from 120 milligrams a day to 600 milligrams of ashwagandha a day. Uh, right off the bat, in case you're saying to yourself, I'm just gonna start with 600, I would caution against this. Everybody's different. I would recommend that you start with less than whatever the company recommends, you know, because again, some studies are showing improvements down here at the lower end. Start with less than is normally suggested by a company. I think it's well, it's, it's a good idea for all of us because we're all different and we may have different uh, predilections in terms of how we respond to supplements. So I, that's always something that I always do myself when I start a new dietary supplement. But that is basically the range that these studies are using. In terms of the side effects, the research that I presented you today didn't really show anything significant when it came to ashwagandha, maybe some skin irritation, stuff like that, GI things, nothing really out of the ordinary, but a few things to keep in the back of your mind if you're going to try ashwagandha. Pregnant or breastfeeding, you really want to speak to your doctor. I personally would not take ashwagandha if you're pregnant. I don't think it's safe. Preliminary research says it might not be, and I'll let your doctor tell you why. It's possible ashwagandha might lower blood sugar levels, and if that is the issue, then it may interfere with diabetes medications. Same thing for people taking hypothyroidism medications. It, there is some evidence that ashwagandha may raise thyroid hormone levels. And while that may seem like a good thing for people with hypothyroidism, if you're taking hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism medication, like say levothyroxine, it might in theory elevate those, those thyroid hormones too much, which could be equally as bad. And it is also possible, since hypothyroidism is an autoimmune condition, it's possible ashwagandha may interfere with a wide array of autoimmune uh, diseases. Again, there's not a lot of research out there, but there's a lot of autoimmune diseases out there, rheumatoid arthritis, diabetes, etc. So again, you talk to your doctor. If you take any medications whatsoever, again, I'm going to refer you back to your physician because there's just not a lot of dietary supplement and, and medication research out there. How do herbs and supplements interact with medications? Again, it, it would be complicated to do a whole video on that, so I'll refer you back to your doctor just to be safe. And then lastly, if you are having surgery, yeah, it's possible that uh, the doctor may say, get off the ashwagandha, as they probably might say for a whole bunch of other supplements. It's possible supplements may have primitive blood thinning properties, which would be not a good idea if you're having surgery. Again, run that past your doctor if any of this applies to you. That's all I got for you, gang. Hopefully this helped you better understand ashwagandha. If you got any comments or questions, leave them below and I'll do my best to help you out myself. If you have any questions, again, leave them. And uh, until next time, gang, I'm Joe Cannon. Go out, be safe, and where you can, do try to make a difference.